Hello, hello, and welcome to the Boreadas Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm so happy to be spending some time with you today. I hope you're doing well. It is Friday, March 12th. It's starting to be spring out here in Canada, and I'm very excited to be spending more time outdoors. <laughs> All right, today I want to talk about the most powerful person in the room. I feel that there's a huge shift going on in the world when it comes to role models and power and what we look up to. It used to be different um, inside of me. Uh, how I perceived powerful people. I thought powerful people are loud and aggressive and dominant. Um, even, yeah, uncomfortable to be around, let's say. And now I traveled, I met people, I worked in all different kinds of jobs. I lived in different countries. And what I observed is that the most powerful person in the room has the most calm and steady heartbeat. The powerful person that I look up to is a listener instead of a talker. They let people talk, they make f people feel good, and they know exactly where they stand. They don't have to prove anything. They are very secure, and they make people feel secure and good about themselves too. So if you imagine a chain with all kinds of um, elements um, like links <laughs> whatever you say that in English the leader that I was describing here is kind of pulling that chain and the people are like magnets and want to follow that person and the leader who is pushy and controlling and aggressive and loud will try to push that chain in this metaphor into a direction and is trying to push people into certain directions. But do you see what happens when you push a chain along the table instead of pulling it along the table? So the one person who's calm and quiet and confident Will people get to follow them and really ultimately get them to do what they want and what the leader wants? And the person who pushes people to do things, he will deal with people who are fearful and resentful maybe even and are kind of... Yeah, the sheep kind of purple uh, people who follow orders without even really questioning and without having a, a spine, you know, without having a backbone. So maybe you can observe in your surroundings now with COVID confinements, uh, lifting up, being more, um, how do you say, with everything being more relaxed again and us being able to socialize a little more, have a look at the people that you perceive as being leaders and how do they behave. Are they very excited and, as I said, loud and controlling and manipulative? Or are they very calm with themselves and at peace And people want to open up to them. They don't really have to ask much from people. People want to serve them. 
I think it's a very, very interesting observation to make because that would also teach you that you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You just go at your pace and you do your thing and you're proud of yourself and then you will have people who will um, encourage you and inspire you and want to help you if you need that help. It's kind of a magnet, people magnet, when you are at peace with yourself and don't make people feel competitive and insecure. For the longest time, I think, and there's still people in power who are intimidating and aggressive and very, yeah, weird to be around because they will always find something that you don't know and that they know. So that feeling of superiority and inferiority is in the room when you are in their presence. So if you want to observe that in people and know that, yeah, you can give that person power and you could follow them and probably learn lots from them, but they will not make you feel good if you stay around these people for too long. And then the leaders who are more quiet and operate from a deep source of calmness, they're usually overseen by those other people that are loud and aggressive and maybe even seen as weak if you put one next to the other. But really, those are the people that are going to inspire you and make you feel strong and make you come out of your shell and discover new things about yourself that you didn't even know about yourself. So I don't know how you grew up, if you grew up with your parents, um, how your primary caregivers behaved around you and what they taught you and how your teachers um, treated you, if you are good with authority or if you are a little rebel inside. But I think it's definitely worth looking at yourself and who you admire, who do you look up to, and what does it tell you about yourself? Um, I gave you the example of the aggressive leader and the more confident and very quiet and calm leader. And yeah, maybe you observe already that you are following the aggressive leader and think that that is power and this is how you can manipulate people into what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Then I invite you to look at the other leader and how they um, get people to do what they want and inspire people and um, are very, very good at what they're doing without wasting any energy or risking heart attacks. <laughs> Also in a group of people, it's very interesting to observe how people behave. A lot of people feel inferior when there's someone happy and proud and talkative and um, see it kind of as a negative that the person is talking and happy for themselves. And some people are very quiet and observant and kind and are really good listeners. And then there is others who are very loud and aggressive and always want to dominate the conversation and never really let anybody talk. And that's also a sign of huge insecurity. But those, power, those people are given so much power and attention most of the time and they can be very destructive very destructive and, yeah, as I said earlier, building resentment in others. So yeah, do this little social experiment and look at who you are looking up to and maybe look what's going on in your family or in your close friend circle. Thank you so much for listening to the Borealis Experience. 
I'm your host Aurora and I will be back tomorrow again. Bye-bye.